Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Golden Goal Show. Welcome to Season 4, Episode 9. Back on the show. Welcome after a beautiful weekend of football. It was nice outside. It was raining in London. Depressing. We love that. But it's okay. I don't know what else to say. Come on. It's easy. But everybody, thank you. And welcome watching on YouTube and Spotify. Let me first introduce you to my co-host of the show. And that's indeed, of course, Rodney. Mate, how are you? A Chelsea fan and also a fan of uh, Barta. How are you? Hola, amigos. Uh, me gusta la club porque I fell in love with them a long time ago. Um, best of both worlds, Chelsea, Barcelona, vamos. Miley Cyrus, I love that. Okay, and also introducing another guest on the show who is a transfer agent, and I'm so glad to have him here because it's just a blessing to have him here, as always. Agent Dimitri, currently an agent of the Minnesota Grizzlies. I cannot wait to understand what you have in the recent transfers. Agent Dimitri, how are you, mate? Just give me a little, little quick transfer. Are we talking about Minnesota? That's like the United States, Minnesota, or are we talking the United States, Minnesota? That's part of Canada. The Canada, of course, eh? They are the biggest syrup, transfer eh? that's happening. Yes. So we're exchanging Minnesota. Yeah, that's kind of um, redundant. Um, redundant. We're yeah. ex- exchanging it for. Um, uh, the Winnipeg Lake. Oh no! Why the Winnipeg Lake? It's 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 more useful. Okay, I understand the oil distribution and also mathematics in the Grizzlies. I like that. Okay, and then also introducing a guest who has not been on the show in six years. I don't know if he wants to be known as himself, but a hey, typical German guy, a fan of Bayern München. How are you doing, mate? How are you doing? I've been good, but you've been good. Yeah, thank you. And yeah, we haven't been yeah, in my show in sehr, sehr long. I haven't had you out here in so long. So I'm glad to have you and on. Six, and... Yeah, six years. Six years. Mm-hmm, six years. All right. Nice. Well, everybody, let us first get into our time of the show, which is indeed breaking news. And let me hit the button. That is great. That is not the button. I am very sorry, everybody. That was very disrespectful of me. I will never do it again. But yes, crisis. So, Vinicius Jr., can we be surprised of what happened to him? Can anybody guess? Maybe a wild guess. But yes, let me just say it. Vinicius Jr., Sevilla supporter, ejected after allegedly racially abusing Real Madrid forward in one-to-one draw. It happens every goddamn weekend. Vinicius Jr. praised Sevilla for taking swift action against a supporter after Real Madrid forward was allegedly racially abused in their one-to-one draw. He said in the 19th minute he had been a victim of racist abuse. Sevilla ejected the supporter and handed them over illegal authorities. So, honestly, good. As finally, I guess, Sevilla, maybe they have like a more modest crowd to pinpoint people that are being rude and racist to other players. So, hey, that's good that at least Sevilla crowd did that. So, all right, and over here we do like a one or two words for this, so you only can say one or two words about this. So, um, Agent Dimitri, you got one or two words for this news. I know you are a good fan of um, Vinicius Jr. He's a great player. Not as good as Senior. Vinicius Senior is actually better. You're right. Okay, thank you. And also, um, William, one or two words for this? I mean, good for us to be here for taking action or moving the fan, but the Spanish Federation really needs to get a hold of this problem because this is going on for Oh, years. don't need to get into that. Yes, 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 yes. We've uh, yeah, The Spanish Federation is messed up, right? And it's going to be messed up for some time now. So lovely. And then, Ronnie, one or two words for Mr. Vinny Jr. here. I like his hair. Mm-hmm. Looks pretty cool. A little bit of class, a little bit of, um, you know, just him being him. I just I like that he keeps on being him at on the pitch at the end of the day. He is him. He is indeed him. Okay, well, honestly, let's go on to the the next one, and boom. Next news is indeed, oh yes, very stuff, nice. So, ref watch, Liverpool's Ibrahim Konate should have been sent off against Everton, as the Premier League official, Dermot Gallagher. So, Liverpool defender Ibrahim Konate was fortunate to avoid a red card during Merseyside derby against Everton. Chelsea goalkeeper Robert Sanchez was lucky not to concede a penalty, while Demont Gallagher also reflects on three handball decisions. So, 
for the Liverpool 2 0 to Everton. Frustrated defender Gerard Branfite inconsistently in the Premier League, refereeing after claiming Everton were denied a level playing field in the Merseyside Derby defeat to Anfield. So, um, if you didn't watch this game, it was pretty early in the Americas, but um, yeah, Ibrahim and Konate, uh did get a second offense, and yeah, it was uh, definitely another yellow card, but no, they didn't send him off, and it's funny, his club did pull him off right after that. That's kind of like a consolation, and yeah, they just put on a different defender, but yeah, and then um, the same thing happened to Everton early in the game, and the guy got sent off, but oh yeah, that was Ashley Young, um, and then um, Kanate did it. Nope, no, no, no uh, yellow card, no red cards, but yeah, and then of course um, the Chelsea goal with Sanchez when he did a Mayweather punch, Falco punch to uh, clear the uh, ball. He completely missed it and ran into someone, so that was great. Um, yeah, I guess um. Ronnie, I'll ask you for this one or two words for Konate and Sanchez. Um, I actually did not watch that one, so I do not have too many words to say on this one. So I'm going to turn my turn over to Will. Nice. Yeah, so I got up early to watch that game. And I will say, when the man, when the, when the, when the uh, man full of excuses himself, Jurgen Klopp admits that his player should have been sent off, mm-hmm. probably should have been sent off. Yep. And I will tell you, as someone who saw this challenge live, the first thing that popped in my head is, oh, that's a yellow card. But apparently, not, it's, apparently the referee didn't have, share the same opinion with me, so. Uh, yep, only thing I got to say that that is. Sí! Yep, Dimitri, you got one or two words for this? Mr. Konate and Mr. Leprechaun right there? Mm, the, um, uh, what did you say the last one's name was? Leprechaun. Oh, golden pot. That that's oh, fine. That's good. Thank you. All right. Well, on to the next one. Let us get into it. So the next news is indeed about Mr. Egghead and Sir Bobby Charlton. Rest his soul. So Sir Bobby Charlton, Man United boss Eric Den Hag, pays tribute to legend ahead of the must-win Champions League game. So Man United and England legend Sir Bobby Charlton died at the age of eight six on Saturday. Man United will pay tribute to Charlton. A minute silence while a wreath will a wreath 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 yeah that's it wreath will be laid on his seat in the director's box ahead of Tuesday's Champions League game against FC Copenhagen at Old Trafford that they will probably lose so that's sad but yeah rest in peace Bobby Charlton you were a great winner finally someone that won a game I mean won a tournament for England so yeah um rest in peace uh, I guess I can ask Ronnie. Got one or two words for Mr. Bobby Charlton. Uh, true legend, true footballer, um, legend of the game, um, just an overall amazing person. You got uh, a lot of people into soccer. It's kind of sad to see him go, but um, his name will forever remain at Old Trafford. So rest in peace, Sir Bobby. Yes, sir. And then, uh, well, you got a typical German guy. You got something you want to say against him? Yeah, of course, of course. You know, great footballer, great man off the pitch. But uh, I will say it's a little bit sad that the club is not doing much to remember him and sort of in shambles these days, especially I mean, with their it, coaching and player consistency and everything else. So Imagine that- watching this Man United and then dying watching the team being this bad. That's that's just... Well, like... I don't know about you, but if, if there is such thing as life after death, there, Tarleton was sitting there the other day and on the edge of his seat, thinking that his club was really going to blow it on on the on the day that they needed to win. So, <sighs> man, you know, joke of a club. All right, Dimitri, what do you got to say against on. Mr. Egghead and Mr. Bobby? I know you got the one on the left looks kind of very serious, and the one on the right is kind of like, oh, it's okay. So yeah. Thank you so much. Yes, very insightful. All right, on to the next news. Um, yes. All right, next news and last news. He does not like me. Yes, Mr. James Madison and Mr. Sonny. We like this. So, Tottenham star, Premier League's most influential player this season, says Jamie Carragher. So, James Madison scored Tottenham's second goal and won the Player Man of the Match award against beating Fulham 2 to nil on Monday to go two points clear at the top of the Premier League table. Imagine Tottenham at the top. 
Well, okay, so um, Madison's conver uh, convertingly coolly from human sons past after South Korean had put Spurs in front of Tottenham Hotspur the notch third Premier League goal of the season. So, Carragher said, for me, he's probably been the most influential player this Premier League season. I think he's been very influential. Why? The credit has to go to the manager. It's his philosophy, his way of playing, but he, Madison, has been the major part of it. No, sorry, he's Australian. Um, He he has come in and taken number seven. Harry Kane, chef, possibly the greatest player and the player of his daughter. That's crazy, mate. The shrimps on the bar, mate. I think that one stage early on, the captain's arm bend on. He can just do it. That cheek little, I can't say that word on use him. He is just a type of personality. Sometimes it's taking a step off if it's a bigger club and there's scrutiny. It's too much players. They can't actually handle it. It's not their ability, it's a mentality. He can. He has embraced it. He's going to go to a bigger club doing interviews with us, being on a spotlight, he absolutely loves it. He bloody loves it. But yeah, Australian accent was 100% on. Um, I guess one or two words, Dimitri, for Mr. Madison and human son, and then Madison with his funny face. He is doing a funny face. They look like, oh, are they like competing in a like figure skating or something? Yeah, they're doing a, a couple duet. That's nice. That's yeah, nice. you got anything you want to say about that? You, are you against couple? No, no, okay. no, no. Okay. I think I think they're they look amazing together. Thank you. All they right, make a wonderful family. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um. Okay. Thank you, Dimitri. And then, uh, typical drummer game. What do you got to say about uh James Madison's current performance in the league? So truthfully, the reason I think Tottenham's doing better overall just as a team is because Kane's gone. Similar situation happened with Bayern when we when we finally got rid of Lewandowski and we we're no longer just trying to feed him the ball all the time. The team started to get better. The team started scoring more and performing better. I think it's what we're seeing with Tottenham at the moment. I mean sure the coach has come up with a great philosophy and everything else, but I mean granted, you know, they've had plenty of other good coaches over the years, Mourinho, Pochettino, Conte, where there wasn't any performance, what was the common factor from those coaching errors? They still have Kane. And so the team wasn't getting better. The team was focusing on feeding Kane instead of feeding the team. So I think we'll continue, continue to see Tottenham hopefully get better over the season and make a title challenge against City because I think we can all agree that it'd be nice to see a different club win for once. Um, to so that, I got to say only one thing. Cheers, Jeff. All right. On to the next news. Oh, wait, did I ask Ronnie? You got one or two words for Mr. Madison here? I'm a little hurt. I'm a little hurt. You forgot me, man. I love you. I'm sorry, Harry. This is for you. Let me, let me talk. Let me talk. <laughs> yeah, that was for you, Ronnie. Shut up. Appreciate, appreciate it. But um, I I, I agree and disagree here with uh, Will a little bit. Like I agree for the fact that as a team, Spurs improved. Um, that ever since Kane has left, but I feel like if Kane had trusted the process and made it less about himself. Um, and trusted the manager, I feel like Spurs would have been top of the, or not would have been, but would be, would finish first this year. Um, I feel like Ooh. if Kane is the final piece um, that Spurs are missing to to just just banging goals left and right, um, more so than they already are. Um, I, I, I love Madison, but to, for him to feed Kane the ball and Son at the same time would be, insane but at the same time will is right in how the team itself improved better because they're not focused on just getting Kane the ball so i'm i'm a little bit in, in between on that transfer but i i still agree at the same time shout out the in-betweeners all right but yeah i agree okay well that was indeed the breaking news and now we can just press this button because it is why not and it's nice to hear about us every time <laughs> Very nice. All right. Well, now let's go on to our great time, which is indeed the best league, if you want to call it that, the Premier League. So, first place is indeed, wow, the, the world is ending. Tottenham at Hotspurs. Oh. Second place, Manchester City. Third place, Arsenal. Fourth place, Liverpool. Fifth place, Austin Villa. Then 18th place is indeed Burnley. 19th, Bournemouth. And then sloping down, Sheffield United. Match day nine, let's get into it. First game, Liverpool, Everton, the Maryside Derby, 2-0 for Liverpool. 
<laughs> if you win, but yeah, referee decisions, it was a little shaky. But red card for Everton being naughty, naughty. Brentford, Burnley, 3 to nil for Brentford and red card for Burnley being naughty. But yeah, comfortable win for Brentford. Bournemouth and Wolves. Red card for Bournemouth, but 1-2 to two for Wolves. Wolves do actually doing well this season after people are predicting them to go down. But yeah, in 12th place right now, comfortable. Nottingham Forest and Luton Town, 2 all. And yeah, great job for Luton Town right now. They are staying afloat and out of the relegation gap. So yeah, Manchester City and Brighton, 2-1. to one. Honestly, could have gone better for Man City, but Brighton did pull a goal back in a red card for Manchester City. So yeah, great job for Man City, but Brighton almost had it. Newcastle Palace, Crystal Palace, 4 to nail for the Newcastle, smashing the Eagles at home. So yeah, they wasn't even polite, but... Yep, comfortable winner for Newcastle with Murphy, of course, doing great in the Prem, as always. Then Chelsea and Arsenal, game of the week, probably. 2-2. Two to two. Chelsea blowing a 2-0 lead, and yes, Arsenal coming back. Yeah, it's improvements and not improvements, but it is what it is. Sheffield United, Manchester United, 2-1 to one for Man United. Scraped off that win, but yep, they'll take the three points any day in Man United. Then Austin Villa and West Ham, 4-1. to one. For Unai Embry and Austin Villa. So, yeah, great job, great win for them. Tottenham, Hotspurs, and Fulham, a game that happened on Monday, 2 to 0. Sonny and Madison doing great as always, but beating Fulham in the London Derby. All right, um, we did talk about Liverpool Everton, so we can just go on to. Um, I did see a bit of Man City Brighton. Erling Haaland did score again after, I believe it was like five games, something, six games, but yeah. Great for him, actually getting on the score sheet again. And yeah, and of course, Doku doing brilliant as always. Love that winger. And then um, Newcastle Palace, yikes. Uh, Murphy, again, I can say he's doing great for Newcastle. So, yeah. Chelsea, Arsenal. Ronnie, go ahead and take the wheel. I know we'll watch this as well too, but Ronnie, I'll let you talk first since you are indeed a blue. Yeah. I love the game. I love the intensity. Um, it was sad to see that Chelsea lost the lead, but I was also happy to see that they're starting to get a little bit more grit about them. They're um, uh, being attacking, attacking and aggressive. Um, I, I love that Thiago, Thiago Silva is still the, one of the best center backs in the world at the age of like 40. It's crazy that we have him. He's probably our best player, but it's it's really it's really awesome to see that Chelsea is starting to get more grit about them. Try respecting the badge respecting the club putting their hearts on the line i know they 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 lost or they didn't lose but it, it felt like a loss because it became a draw <laughs> yeah um but i think that's due to just some injuries right now and once we have our full squad like with reese and then cuckoo um mm -hmm. we'll have that 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 quality to, instead of it being 2-2 two, two, for it to be 4-2 and chelsea win it so i think it's just a matter of just trusting the process due time and Chelsea will get there soon. So it's it's a it's a win and it's a loss, but at the same time, that's why it's a draw. Yep. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. But yeah, I mean Chelsea did they so exceptional that first half. They were pressing off their butt. They had Connor Gallagher. I've never seen anybody press as well as he did in that game. But they've been watching some Man City highlights. And yeah, second half, it feels like uh Sanchez and uh what's his name? Raya switch confidences and uh, yeah, give the ball away a couple times, and but yeah, uh, Mudrik had that beauty of a shot. He meant it 100%. I don't think he was trying to cross that at all. But yeah, then Cole Palmer, of course, scoring penalty, and then um, uh, who who scored the for what's it called Arsenal? I know Trossard did it in the last minute, but who scored their first goal? Rice, yes. Oh yeah, Sanchez gave the ball away to Rice. So ah, <sighs> love that. Love that. But yeah, Chelsea's looking better. Arsenal, eh, a little shaky of a game, but they did come back. Will, do you want to say anything about this game? or? Uh, of course. I just want to say, I'm going to be honest with you, since both of you are blues before, you're making a lot of excuses here by your team. I mean, I don't know about you, but if a team's up 2-0 to nil and you're past the 65th, 70th minute, I mean, you should be doing everything in your power, especially when you're at home, to preserve that lead. And what I saw from Chelsea was just a complete lack of discipline. I had nothing to do with the lack of quality from the players. It's so because the they took... The players, uh, yeah, okay, you the can quality, keep going. The, the quality from the players was sublime. 
but what I saw at the end was just a lack of, like I said, a lack of discipline, a lack of a winner's mentality to close down the ball and continue to march your, march your man, follow your runners, and just overall keep your head in the game, even though you're up to zero at home. Yep, it's because my, they haven't, yeah, no, no, no I, I agree. They haven't won a game in a, I mean, they've won games, but they haven't won against like a top six game in a while now, and they're like, huh? How's this happening? But yeah, they just um, subbed out the wrong people. They subbed out Mudrick. They subbed out Cole Palmer, and they put in Reese James and injured Reese James or recovering Reese James, I might say. And yeah. Also, one, um, one thing I, I do I do want to add real quick. I love Cole Palmer and that false nine. Um, same, same. In the way you played that false nine, we needed that, and that's also why. Um, that's why I was, I was kind of sad when Jao Felix left too, because that false nine position. It's kind of what we needed, so. Yeah. Uh, I wish we gave another chance to Zhao for maybe another season, but eh, it is what it is. Zhao wanted, wanted to leave. He didn't want to stay until. Yeah, especially That's with fair. the project that was going on, but yeah. Okay, well, that was indeed the Premier League, and now we can go on to La 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 La, which is indeed singing lessons. La Liga. And this is Javi, so he's going to go like, eh. Ah. I'm sure that's what Javi sounds like, but yeah. So, La Liga. First place, Real Madrid. Second place, Girona. How are they still there? Third place, Barcelona. Fourth place, Atletico Madrid. Fifth place, Real Sociedad. Then 18th place, Celta Vigo. 19th place, Granada. 20th place, Armenia. Sinking, sinking. Match day 10. Let's get <laughs> I'm coughing. Into it. First game, Asusuna in Granada. 2-0 for Osasuna. So, a red card for Granada being naughty naughty. Second game, Real Sociedad and Mallorca. 1 to 0 for Real Sociedad. Great job for them. Mallorca, pick up the pace. I know it's nice over there, but pick up the pace. Then, sec- third game, Getafe, 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 Giraffe, and Real Betis. 1 to 1, a draw there. Then, another game, Sevilla and Real Madrid, with Ramos going back to his home. And yes, uh, Ramos and Rudiger had a little scarfuffle, but yeah, they still live each other. Uh, one to one, a draw there. Celta Vigo and Atletico Madrid, three to nil for Atletico Madrid. Great win for them, but yeah, red card for Celta Vigo being not say not say. Then Las Palmas and Real Vallecano, zero to one for Real Vallecano, and a red card for Real Vallecano because they like not say not say. Then another game, Girona in Armenia. 5-2. to two. Great scoreline here. I'm going to watch this game again. But yep, great win for Girona. Keeping up their second place right now in La Liga. Then, another game. Villarreal and Alaves. 1-1. One to one, A draw there. Then, another game. Barcelona and Atletico Club. In the last kind of minutes of the game. Uh, what's his name? There's a kid, 17-year-old kid for Barcelona scored it. Yeah, unbelievable. So, great job for them. And then, another game. Valencia and Cadiz. Eh? Agüe. Agüe? Mar- yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But then Valencia and Cadez, 2 to 0 for Valencia and a red card for Cadez. All right, um, Ronnie, did you happen to watch any of the La Liga games or Bata games? I watched a little bit of the La Liga game. Um, I, I like that the fact Xavi gave the youngster the chance um, for the golden moment for him to score. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm liking the fact that our defense is looking really um, like one of the top uh, defenses of, defenses in Europe right now. We're not giving us uh, uh, giving up too many goals. Um, I just yeah, I'm loving where the front is. Hmm. Christensen. Nah, what a lad and good old Blues legend. Or no, nah, I wouldn't say legend. <laughs> <Lol>. <laughs> more, like, more like a maybe a league hero at times. But yes. um, I I just I love where the project is going. I agree. Well. Um, how, I love how the youngsters are helping out the team in their financial times. Um, I'm loving the t- other teenager. I forget his name. I think it's Lamine Yal. Um, uh, Lamel. Just, Lamel. Lamel. Yeah. Lamel. He's, yeah, he's, 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 looking, he's looking to be maybe what Ansu Fati was supposed to be. So I'm just liking it overall. Yeah. Okay. Well, great, 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 great. Yeah. And then um, I can just um, talk about quickly about Real Madrid and what they did. So. Um, with Real Madrid, they did indeed have tie, and yeah, David Alaba scored a 74th minute own goal, and then Dani Carnaval scored in the 78th minute, so 2 0 for um Madrid because own goals count as goals, so lovely. 
And then, of course, Atletico Madrid. I could talk about that for a second. This was it, so three to nil, and it was indeed Griezmann with a hat trick, a penalty in 29th, 64th minute goal, in the 70th minute. The Frenchman can do it all. Then a red card for Ivan Velar. So yeah, that was uh, La Liga, and we can just go on to Serie A. Maybe the bump the Italia Baga. So Serie A, first place Inter Milano, second place AC Milano, third place Juventus. 4th place, Napoli, 5th place, Florentina, then 18th place, Udinese, 19th place, Salentana, and 20th place, Cagliari, Cagliari, Ooh. Match D9, let's get into it. So, Verona, Napoli, 3-1 to one for Napoli, then uh, Torino and Inter Milano, 3-0 to nil for Inter Milano, good job for them, then Sassuolo, nil to 2 for Lazio versus Sassuolo, then Roma and Monza, 1-0 to nil. For Roma and a red card for Monza being not yeah. Salentana and Cagliari, 2 to 0. Oh, just kidding, prank. 2 to 2. And a draw there. Bologna and uh, Frenone Seno, 2 to 1 for Bologna and a red card for Seno. Then Atalanta and Genoa, 2 to 0 for Atalanta. Next game, AT Milano and Juventus. Great game here. But Juventus did take it with the Golden Man. Scoring for his uh, against his his other clubs was it is it called the childhood club if he scored against it was it Locatelli I believe it, it was Locatelli it was Locatelli Locatelli lovely yeah thank you thank you and then Udinese and Les one to one a draw there then Florentina and Napoli nil to two yeah great job but yeah um typical German guy did you happen to watch any games here. Uh, so I didn't necessarily watch any of them, but I did hear about what happened in the Roma game with Mourinho. Oh yeah, tell me, tell me. Yeah, no, I heard that you know, Mourinho was being bad again, made some gestures at the refs and was sent off for it. So, you know, typical Jose behavior. I think it's Nothing time yet. maybe he looked, I think maybe it's starting to be time he looked into retirement and grab the walker and go live out the rest of his days in Lisbon. Or wrestling. You never know, he could be in wrestling. Okay, um, we can talk about some games really quick. So Inter Milano, Torino. Marcus Duram scoring 59th. Latoro Martinez scoring 67th. Then Hakan Charnaglu scoring 95th. So easy win for them. Then we can talk about really quick another game. Juventus, yeah. Manuel Cotelli scoring 63rd minute. And then Malik Tanau scoring the 40th minute. Yeah, so good job for uh, Juventus. Bringing AC Milan down when they needed those points, actually. Then Roma, they did win that with Stephen El Shadaway, the guy with the nice spiky hair. But he's still doing great as always. But yeah, how old is El Shadaway actually? I don't even he's know. I think he's in his 30s now. Is he in his 30s? I'm in here. I'll look. I'm curious. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I just looked it up right now. He is indeed 1992. That's crazy. You know what that means? He's 30. <laughs> yeah, he's 30. But um, yeah, that was it. Yeah, we can now go into. The Bundesliga. Oh, this could be fun. So, for the Bundesliga, Javol, we like this. Very good. First place is Bayern Leverkusen. Second place is Stuttgart. Third place is, wow, Bayern München. Fourth place is Dortmund. And then fifth place is indeed RB Leipzig. Then 16th place is Köln. 17th place is Bochum. And then sinking down, very sad for me, is Mainz in 18th place. Match day eight. Let's get into it. First game, Dortmund and Werder Bremen on the Friday. 1-0 for Dortmund with Julian Brandt scoring a great goal. Then Wolfsburg and Leverkusen, Bayern Leverkusen. 2-1 two two for Bayern Leverkusen. Great job for them. Keeping up their fourth win in a row. Great job for them. Then Darmstadt and Leipzig. 3-1 for Leipzig. Comfortable win for them. Then Union Berlin and Stuttgart. Another comfortable win for Stuttgart. Doing very, very good. That was their fifth Win in a row, so great job for Stuttgart, doing great this season. Then Eintracht Frankfurt and Hoffenheim, 3-1, to one, did watch part of this game. Great job for Frankfurt, keeping up the pressure and winning the game. Then Freiburg and Bochum, 2-1 to one for Freiburg. Yep, great win for them. Then Mainz and Bayern, when Mainz could have taken up their fifth consecutive game against them and winning it. Nope, they lost the sixth one, so... 3 to 1 for Bayern, so comfortable one for them, I would say. Then Köln and Bayern München Gladbach, 3 to 1 for Köln and a red card for Bayern München Gladbach. Very naughty. 
Spanking, Hallenheim, and Augsburg. Five to two for Augsburg. Great one for them. Um, I can talk about Franker, and I already just said they kept the pressure, did great. So yeah, no surprises there. And Neverkusen doing well as, as always. So I mean, yeah, will they fall off? Yeah, possibly. But yes, of course, the person I wanted to listen about it, Bayern Munich, uh, Mr. William, Mr. Typical German guy. We have wanted you forever on the show to talk about this. So go ahead, please. Take the wheel. I will tell you that the scoreline might have been three to one, but mm -hmm. Bayern could have very easily lost that game. In fact, when it was two to one, they gave Mainz multiple chances, and Mainz hit the post a couple times, and basically. What I'm seeing from Bayern this season is a lot of miscommunication in the back and a complete lack of leadership throughout the squad. And at the end of the day, the one man to blame for, in my opinion, for what's going on is really Tuchel. He has a proven leader in the squad through Müller, and he refuses to play him. He keeps sitting in that, him on the bench and not using his influence like he should. And, you know, the reality is many times this season, the only reason we've even managed to win these games is because Hell comes off the bench and happens to score a goal in the 90th plus minute. Which makes Tuchel look great, but at the end of the day, we all know he's a complete fraud. He's been a fraud since he left Chelsea. He's been a fraud since he left PSG. So, mm -hmm. I, I, it's definitely time for Bayern to start looking at a better coach because right now the squad just clearly cannot mesh well with him. And I have a strong feeling that if it, if it continues like this in Bundesliga, that it's going to be an early Champions League exit and perhaps a uh, perhaps a for the first time in a long time, Bayern may not win anything. Who knows? We'll see. But right now, they're getting very lucky in a lot of their games, especially last the previous one against Leipzig. They're very lucky that they managed to pull off a draw. So, oh, yeah. You have any other things you want to say about Bayern? Hmm. Well, I could go on and on and on, but I like that Zani is finally performing this season. But True. I think my big, my big, my biggest criticism of him so far is the number of times he has a chance to pass and he just takes these stupid shots and doesn't score the goal. And I've been seeing, and to tell you the truth, I've been seeing similar things from Musiala as well. A lot of oh. dribbling, a lot of low percentage shots. And I think Ew. at the end of the day, what, I think at the end of the day, what Bayern really needs is really missing is that leadership factor with Müller. Anytime he comes into the game, the game changes. We get good, good chances. The pressing's better. The team seems more cohesive, but. When he's not there, you know, it's kind of, you can tell people are lost. Yeah. And, you know, right now we're surviving because we have Kane up front, who thankfully has been scoring quite a bit lately. But the last, even, you know, the last few games, I mean, even when Kane does score, you know, sometimes he just sort of disappears, especially when it really matters, which is not too surprising. I mean, he did play for Tottenham and never won a trophy. So whoa, maybe he's just trying to contain that trick with Bayern. Maybe he's just trying to continue the streak of Bayern and not win another trophy. Who knows? I don't know for it. <laughs> okay, well, let me go in a couple of the games. So, Leverkusen goes in Wolfsburg. Uh, Jermin Frimpong scoring in the 13th minute. And then tying it up is Lacroix for Wolfsburg. And then Alex Romaldo in the 62nd minute. We win for Leverkusen. And then, of course, we can go into a team that's doing very well right now, which is indeed Leipzig. And yeah, Luis Openda, Openda scoring the first minute of the game. And then Tobias Kimpe for Darmstadt scoring 32nd. Then Emil Forsberg scoring the 24th. Then Luis Openda scoring the 72nd as well too. Then of course, Stuttgart and Uni Berlin. Uh, Saru Gurasi scoring the 16th minute. Then Silas scoring the 81st. And then Denise Undav scoring in the 88th minute. Keeping it up for Stuttgart. Yeah, great job for them. Then, of course, for Bayern, um, scoring in the 11th minute is Kingsley Coman, the French man who is never in the hospital. Cough, cough. Then Harry Kane scoring in the 16th minute. Then Anthony Gazzier scoring in the, for Mainz in the 43rd. Then Leon Goretzka scoring in the 59th minute. Make it a comfortable 3-1. And that was indeed the Bundesliga. So now we can go into Ligue 1. Who gets? So um, Uber Eats says Ligue 1. First place is Monaco. Second place is Nice. Third place is Paris Saint-Germain. Fourth place is Lille. And fifth place is Brest. And then 16th place is Metz. 17th place is Clermont-Foot. Then 18th place is Lyon. Then March 9th, let's get into it. So, um, Le Alvé 
and Lien, nil to nil, a draw there. Then PSG and Strasbourg, three to nil for PSG against Chelsea 2.0. So that's a, yeah, a comfortable one for PSG. No surprises. Then Nice and Marseille, one to nil for Nice and a red card for Marseille being nulti nulti. Then Lorient and Rennes, two to one for Lorient. Great win for them. Then Giel and Brest, one to nil. A great game here, but you know, took those points. Then Deleus and Reim, one to one, a draw there. Then Nantes and Montpellier, disappointing for Montpellier, I'm just kind of sad. 2 to 0 for Nantes, so yeah, been on Montpellier. Then Monaco and Metz, 2 to 1 for Monaco, keeping up their first place right there. And then Lyon and Clermont Foot, 2 to 1 for Clermont Foot, keeping Lyon at the very bottom. So yeah, Lyon is really doing not, not well right now, at least. Not well at all. All right, well, that was in the. Uh, okay, sorry. Difficult German, or did you happen to watch any Lagoon this 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 uh, weekend? Because I know everybody watches Lagoon. I didn't watch the games too closely, but I will say it's amazing to me how PSG has so much money and somehow manages to still barely pull our results. No surprises. That's all I got to say. All right, so now let's go into the last one, and that is indeed the MLS and Saudi Pro League because because Mary C and Ronaldo are here. Uh, for MLS and in. The division of Inter Miami, Cincinnati's first place, and then 14th place is Inter Miami with Lionel Messi. He almost scored. He was off sides in his latest match, but yep, it, yeah, that's all I really gotta say. Then Saudi Pro Leagues, Al Nassar with Ronaldo and Mane. They are in third place right now, but uh, Al Hilal and Al Tawun is above them. Yeah, so it is what it is. And then of course, um, Steven Gerrard's El Etifak is in seventh place. Then Benzema and... Where is Benzema again? Is he in Al Etihad? Yes, he is in Al Etihad with Kante. They are in fifth place, so yeah, great for them. All right, well, that was indeed the league. And now we can go to something that is amazing. And Dimitri, are you there? Are you awake? Are you... you are you speaking? If you're there, can you speak some um, language to me? I'm, I've me... been just listening to... Uh... To, to how Bayern been so hot and, and you know all that okay well speaking of hot um yeah it'd be it'd be it'd be absolutely great yeah it's uh I don't know how you're feeling today are you you good how are you feeling oh Jennifer please stop that <laughs> Anytime. Sorry, my bad. All right, okay. Well, um, let me just pause this music because it has been going for the past uh, 17 years. Another one. All right. Well, everybody, you're going to get to something that's great, which is indeed the Golden Goal Show football quiz. We do this every time. And yeah, um, Dimitri, I don't know if you've won one. Actually, you have won one because you won way forfeit. But yes, this is between... I won three of them. You won three of them, my bad. Sorry. Typical German guy and Dimitri. You were both battling for this. And let me just give you the rules really fast. And here you go. Welcome everyone, everybody, and everything to the Golden Goal Show Football Quiz. Our guests today will have 10 seconds to answer each of the 10 football-related multiple-choice questions. Woo wow woo. Whoever has the most answers correct by the end of the quiz wins a huge prize. Wow. Maybe. Maybe not. I dunno. I don't work here. Anyways, good luck, and may the odds be ever in your favor. Sully, baby! That is sensation! Just when you think... Cheers, Jeff. See! 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 Got it? You guys ready? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's time to go! Yeah! Alright, I'm gonna start pressing buttons. Alright, yeah. So, first question is indeed... Um, you have 10 seconds for this, so... Let me just read out the question. And you both have to say it at the same time, or, like, say it whatever... What time you want, but below 10 seconds. Alright. Who is the greatest football player, also known as the king of football? Is it A, David Beckham... B, Bele, or C, Maradona. You have 10 seconds. Bele. Luigi? Bele, Maradona, or David Beckham, or Andy Kuma? Uh, Maradona. 
Okay. The correct answer is indeed. Okay, Dimitri. I didn't know you were so good. Uh, I'm kidding. You got it wrong. But the typical German guy, you did correct that correct. So it is one to nil for Mr. Typical German guy. All right. Number two. How many players in a total will be on the field in a typical football match? Is it A, 11, B, 22, C, 33? You have 10 seconds. 45. Eh? 45. Oh, I didn't say the D yet, but D was 45. 45. Okay, okay. Um, take a little journey, what do you guys say? 22. All right, the correct answer is indeed. Whoa! 45! Congratulations! Good job, Will. 22. You silly man. But you got it correct, actually, so. Dimitri, I don't know what you're doing. If you're doing a little, you know what I mean. Uh, you know, this this little stuff. This button I'm going to press is you right now. You get me? Yeah, you get me. Okay, but yeah, um, it is indeed 22. All right, number three. How long does a football game last? 45 minutes, 90 minutes, 120 minutes, or three years and seven days? You have 10 seconds. 90 minutes. Depends who is playing. Um, I guess... Um, Bayern Munich. I see them definitely 10 minutes. Okay. So, the correct answer is indeed... Oh, Dimitri, you were close, but Will took this ahead. Well, yeah, Dimitri, maybe next time. Maybe next time. All right, number four. Which player scored the hand of God goal and match of 1986 in World Cup? Was it A, Cristiano Ronaldo, B, Lionel Messi, C, Diego Maradona, or D, Ryan Reynolds? Okay, you have 10 seconds. You know, Ryan Reynolds sounds like a correct one. He is like, isn't isn't that the guy? Yeah, that the guy that was on the on, the, on that football game, or maybe it was. Um, um I'd go for actually. Um, no, no, she she ain't performing as good as she was in, in that movie I've seen with her. Excellent. Um, yeah, I've seen a lot of movies with her. She she is my favorite. All right, let's move on. What, what, what's your uh, answer? Um. Uh, uh, my answer is uh, Ronaldo, James Messi, Cameron. Madonna, or James Cameron. James. Congratulations, Dimitri. I'll give you that. But it was Maradona. But I'll give you that too again. So yeah, um, uh, typical German guy. Got that right too. All right, number five. Who can add time to a football match? Re a a referee. B coach. C team captain. Or D the dictator of the Northern Antarctic Penguin Kingdom. You have 10 seconds. A Referee. naked fan of Arsenal uh, running across the field. That is actually true. Um, it was a German guy. What do you got to say? Referee. Okay, fair, fair, fair. Um, the correct answer is indeed naked is not on here. I'm sorry, Dimitri. I see what your mind is, though. So, close, but... It was when I did take that. So, all right. Number six. What is the limit of stoppage time that can be added at the end of a match? Is it A, five minutes, B, ten minutes, C, no limit, or D, help me, I am helping, help me, so help. You have ten seconds. No limit. How much did the referee get paid? Um, Barcelona. Mm, then no limit. Okay, well, both of you got that correct. So, hey, good job. Um, Dimitri, you're top of the list right now. Number seven, the minimum number of players that a football team needs to be eligible to play is A, 7, B, 9, C, 11, or D, help me, I am winning, help me, I am under the water, save me. Okay. According to Inter Miami logic, it's just one. True. <laughs> that you need to buy from overseas. <laughs> That's actually very good. I, I kind of want to get. Okay, well, the correct answer is seven, but I'm going to give Dimitri that one. Well, you got it correct, but. 
Piss off, you wanker. All right. Number eight. The two lines. Oh, yeah. The current score, by the way, is tied with four to four. Because why not? So. <laughs> what? The, yep. Don't worry about it. Don't cry. The two lines, which run the length of the football field, are called A, run lines, B, boundary lines, C, touch signs, or D, Harry Kane is a very good man and has nice cheeks. You have 10 seconds. Touch line. Okay. Mr. Dimitri. I've been told if it's two lines, it's positive. That's, that's what my ex-wife told me. But, Honestly, uh, your ex-wife was a great grandmaster in the Ninjago tournament. Yeah, so I I, I don't know. It kind of sounded bad. And, 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 you know, those tests sometimes not very accurate, too. So I don't know. But um, I think two lines, kind of lots of trouble. That That's what they're called. Touch lines? Yeah, the two okay. lines. It, okay. It yeah, means you know positive. That yes. Everyone knows that. Yes. Po just for positive, I'm going to give you that. All right. It is a tie. So... Nine. Good job, Jivagai. Guy. That was English. Number nine. Which country won the most FIFA World Cup titles? Is it A. Deutschland, Germany. B. England. C. Brazil. Or D. Madagascar with the Penguins. Is you have ten seconds now. Brazil. What you gotta say, Dimitri? Germany, England, Brazil. England's a bad guess. Hmm. That's 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 a tough one. What what are we talking about again? Because I, I was World thinking Cup. like, oh oh, the World Cups. What type yeah. of cups? The ones that is you... it A B C D? <laughs> but um, only thing I gotta say that that is very nice. Double D. If we're very going nice. for double Ds, then def definitely oh, Brazil. Yeah. Um, yes. Brazil, correct for both of you. So, it is a tie, and you have one more question. Number 10, what is in the middle of a field? A, a center box, B, a center square, C, a center circle, or D, a center, um, a center, um, give me a word, a center single drop of love. It, it, it depends what that, that time of game it is because that I've seen circle. sometimes there is a ball there that and sometimes circle. there is a puck there because I've puck. seen them play that football when they play with a puck. That is true. It's, I think it's different type of football, but I'm not sure. And and they also have different socks that they wear and, and, and shoes, weird shoes. Yeah, yeah. Like weird clits, but... Okay. So what's your what's your answer? Center box, center square, center circle, or center of my heart of love? I know that there is center back somewhere on the football field. Yeah. Sometimes yep. they do that, but uh, it sounds like center circle would be the correct answer. But then again, I'm mm -hmm. gonna go with center back because um, center well, back is is, is like. In the I center, said circle four times. but then uh, again, it's final answer. Uh, I'll say center circle. Okay, well, correct. That is correct. Okay, on to the last question of the game. Whoever answers this first, and you have to say the answer as fast as you can, wins it. From where can you substitute a player? Enter what? Okay, I'm going to do a different one. Which of the following items that a player can't wear during the game? A, tape. C, shin guards. D, jewelry. Or, or D, or E, a pretty French beret designed by the Japanese Ninjago Warrior coming to you live on NBC. I love Jennifer Lawrence. Jewelry. Okay. <laughs> well, um, this is a tough one. Jewelry. I love Jennifer Lawrence. All right. She is amazing. Winner. Yeah, I actually wanted to marry her when I was younger. But then I decided to um, 
to not do that because yep. that would be a bit difficult because, you know, travel and distance and everything. I mean, I used to live in Italy <laughs> before. So. Yeah. But then again, I didn't know if she would like me or not or like we could become <laughs> pen pals. I wrote her a mail right. and, and she never replied to me. So if Shira watches this, like she can reply back and then maybe we can, you know, Go on a date, and you know, I mean, not 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 even a date. Maybe just you know to hang out at first, you know, yeah. just to to get to know each other a little bit better. Um, and and, and I can do um, right. I can, I can't even. <laughs> no, I don't know if it's not a fancy place. If it's like gonna be one of those quick dates, like if we go to McDonald's, <laughs> I can't even pay for the half of yeah. the order. So it's well, like you know, I, I don't know how much. Mm. You know, yeah. Would be but maybe she's like you know, <laughs> she eats a lot. Then then I wouldn't pay half. Like I I would say that it's like we do it independently. You know, she does yeah. hers. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I I do mine because I don't eat as much as as probably she does. But no, not that I'm saying that she eats much. It's just probably mm-hmm. like, it's, listen, I don't know. It's just what I'm saying is like, yeah, just. Yeah, that that would be ideal. But then again, that would lead like to second date, and then usually second date you have to go fancier. Yeah. But then McDonald's is fancy. Then no, 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 no. First date, we gotta switch it up. First date gonna be something really nice. Awesome. Yeah. Are you done? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. Well, the winner of this show is indeed so. Typical German guy, congratulations. Not Jennifer Lawrence, I'm sorry, uh, Agent Dimitri, but maybe next time. Yep. Congratulations, typical German guy, you have won the Golden Girls for four quiz. How do you feel? Yeah, feels great to win. Um, I'm not sure when the next time Bayern's gonna win the Champions League is, but for me, this feels like I've won the Champions League. There's no, there's no other feeling like it. Sulkiness, back of Wayne. Okay. Well, yeah, congratulations. <laughs> and congratulations to typical, I mean, Agent Dimitri. So, so, so I, I, I don't get it. You told me Jennifer Lauren's going to be here and she's not here, so... She's going to be here but... in the daylight savings time of American Lufthansa time. I, I Lufthansa, hate daylight yeah. saving time. I, I, I hate any time she changes, but... What if she changes it's... something? Mm, like, that, that's, you know, that's a good idea. We can change McDonald's for Burger King. Okay, that's better. Well... And then next time it's gonna be McDonald's, because they figure like, mm-hmm. or, or like, I don't know, man. I'm just trying to you know stay within budget limits. It's okay. I'm just hey. like, hey, it's okay. I think we have to save Jumanji. That's all I gotta say to that. Got it? Oh yeah, that sounds familiar. Isn't that Jennifer's voice? Jumanji. That is Jennifer Lawrence. Yes, yes. You know she's been bald and lately. What and the fuck? Up. up too. What? That is sensational. I don't know. Okay. Well, she, we're gonna she, go. On. Yeah. The, yeah. The, didn't she play the main role in 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 Jumanji? Yes. That big guy. That, that was what I was thinking. Cause, cause whoa. like. Whoa, 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 whoa! Don't assume. Or did I mess something up? Probably. No. Cheers, Jeff. Okay. Well. That was lovely. We can now go on to the great time, which is football memes of the week, brought to you by Rival Bantos. And of course, this is Elwe, our mascot of football memes of the week. He is such a great boy, and he is holding his popsicle, and he is Phil Foden's son. All right, let us now go on to the first meme, which is, of course, about, oh, Mr. Sergio Ramos in Sevilla. So, yep, um, secretly, you think he's a Real Madrid supporter and a Bayern and a Real Madrid fan, but you know what? Chances say, actually, someone tweeted this. So, born to say Forza Barca, forced to say Hala Madrid. Sergio Ramos, currently with Sevilla, has tied Real Madrid and got a yellow card. Helping Barcelona stay first place. And then, earlier in the season, he scored an own goal for Barcelona, keeping them first place. So, Ramos... Honestly, Barca fan right there. I can't prove me anything else, but that's all I gotta say. 
The next one is, of course, about Man City and Jermaine Doku, the beautiful right winger for Man City, the new regen of Sterling. We'd love to see it. And yeah, he was turning in uh, people crazily. And this one was funny. He dribbled James Miller, and they said, no way Doku turned Milliner into Ice Spice, twerking for them rupees. So yeah, um, James Miller is twerking nowadays, so good for him. Right? Then Doku is a legend. And this is uh, Elway. We love him. All right, on to the last meme of the week, which is, of course, about Eden Azad. Rest his soul. I mean, he didn't die, but retired from football. And yeah, um, I don't fully blame Eden Azad flopping around Madrid when there were literally 10 McDonald's in just a two mile radius from the Bernabeu. He was set up for failure. And honestly, I can't say anything more than that is absolutely correct. So. Rest in peace, um, Eden Hazard's, uh, what's it called, uh, wait. Yeah, well, that was indeed the football memes of the week. And now, let us get into the Golden Goal Show, which was this episode, episode 9 of season 4. And yeah, all I gotta say is, for everybody, thank you so much for watching. It was lovely to have you on. And yeah, time to end the show. Everybody, thank you for watching on spotify and on youtube hope you guys all enjoy the episode it was a great time and yeah typical german guy thank you for being on hope to have you on in other episodes as well too hope you had a great time <laughs> this is where you, where you say something great love that and of course agent dimitri thank you for being on as always and jennifer lawrence would be proud so thank you yay that sounds so happy. All right, well, everybody. I think thank I confused them with Rock. Oh, I haven't. Everybody, thank you so much for watching this will show. Will he go I'm on a date with me? Yes, he will go on a date with you. I will call him after the show. But everybody, <laughs> like, subscribe, and share. Without sharing it, you will not know about Ethan Hazard's current diet. Everybody, as we say, repeat after me one love football. One love football. Good, I love that. Dimitri, one I love football. Love football. Mm hmm. So one uh, of uh, football. Football. This is going on way too long. You can do it. Come on, I believe in you. I prefer basketball, but I don't. Okay. okay. Football. Yes. Thank you for watching, and 